when Newton invented gravity, he did not know what, why we would need it. He was just doing fundamental science. And these days, everybody needs to know already how we're going to implement what we find. And we don't even get the money if we don't say what the purpose, other than knowledge, of our research is. But what would you say to those people? I would say that, um, that we're not giving up on that. Uh, it's, it's not that, uh, that this replaces or pushes out fundamental science and research. I mean, that, that's, that's not our, our proposition. The idea is just to have a more kind of focused and cons effort to solve and to address, as the previous speaker has pointed out, those grand challenges and to kind of bring more people together to, uh, to apply their, uh, their science, uh, their fundamental science, um, to solve and to help address those issues. Uh, Mr. Paula, would you, would you uh, agree that also in Europe more money is going to science that has a direct need, whether it's mm -hmm. economically or whether it's uh, socially or in any kind of way? We take more a societal issue, a societal problem, and then see how science technology can contribute to solving that issue. So we turning it around a little bit, and that's what you also mentioned, this societal uh, challenges uh, pillar. So in the future, uh, research and innovation framework program will have three pillars, one for excellence, so fundamental research, if you will, one for industrial leadership, and one for this societal challenges. And there, what we're trying to do is focus more on the grand societal challenges like aging, food security, uh, climate change, etc., and see how we, with our funding of uh, science, research and innovation can contribute solving uh, those issues. A lot of things are changing, <laughs> that there are, um, whether you call it problems or challenges, yeah. a lot of things are happening yeah. right now. We have aging, energy, yeah. uh, we need to do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, that's a very good point. I think uh, these grand challenges are not just called grand challenges for advertisement or you know, for purposes. These are really grand challenges and we need every you know, sensible kind of uh, uh, scientist uh, to, to work on them. And so that, that's, the, that's the, I think, the agenda. You're from the European uh, Commission. Um, you have money to hand out to scientists. Mm -hmm. um, let's just go through a few um, ways to get the money, to, to keep it very short. It needs to be innovative. It has to be scientifically responsible. Uh, can it be just national Dutch research or French research or, or Belgian? Or does it have to be more European-based, working together with several countries? It, the latter. It's really, uh, our programs are constructed in such a way that they need to deliver European added value. So it is really about uh, several countries, several well, institutes in several countries getting together to jointly uh, get a a research theme going on a European level or address an issue that can then be be uh, implemented or used in, in several uh, member states. It's not about uh, solving national or local uh, problems. That is that is true. The rest of this day and also tomorrow we'll hear uh, about a lot of projects that are already going on um, within the um, Responsible Innovation Project. Um, what is new this year is that there's also projects that are a bit faster running in with a bit of shorter scope. Can, can you tell me something mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, it's a kind of um, in-between phase. So, so we've had the first phase, the, the, the startup uh, part of the program, uh, the first uh, five years. Uh, and now we've had this, uh, it has been referred to these top sectors in the Netherlands, kind of innovation, new innovation strategies and policies. So we've decided to have a short call uh, with shorter projects that could deliver results to those top sectors as uh, so on the go and so and, 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 and playing to the needs of those top sectors and, and also to deliver a proof of concept of the of the responsible innovation. Because I started with the Royal Academy of the Sciences. This might also be where the um, let's say softer science can come in, you know, the Absolutely. philosophers, the historians, uh, the um, maybe even literary scientists, I don't know. Absolutely, that, that, that is a wonderful opportunity for the humanities and the social sciences within, uh, which sometimes leave, uh, feel a little bit left out of this, you know, it's all about technology and engineering and uh, innovation and where are we. But I think, um, and we, we have talks within, with, it, with NWO uh, about how, how we could uh, bring them in 
uh, and uh, there are plenty of opportunities to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it does require a certain prepared mind to do that and a willingness to look at the issues and also to be more problem-oriented, not to say, well, just I want to be left alone and do my work in, my, in, my, in seclusion, but I, I want to open up and I want to see what I can contribute to, to society. That's important. Uh, thank you for this uh, moment and thank the two of you, Lino, Paula and Jeroen van der Hoofd. Thank you very much. Okay.